well uh, hello students i hope you are enjoying your stream which you've taken after a meticulous thinking in class 10th that whether to go in for science humanities or commerce now that you are here in this stream be rest assured that there are a large number of opportunities which are waiting for you after you finish off your graduation your masters you can get into banking you can get into insurance you can get into teaching and many more and the most important and the most successful rather i should say is becoming an entrepreneur that is starting something of your own that is what well we teach you that what a business is all about and that's the best occupation that one can get into now coming to this point what is business what is a basic understanding of you all of the term business ek general understanding hai business matlab saste mein kharido aur mehanga becho uske beech ka jo margin hai wo apni jeb mein dalo that is your profit this is an layman's understanding of the word business which is very correct business is derived from the word being busy so we can say that being busy is business but in finer terms if i am to define what business is it is an occupation which include the activity which include all activities you know which are connected with production or procurement of goods for sale and adding a profit margin to that and selling it to the customers for the satisfaction of their needs the most important point what i'm going to stress over here is satisfaction of customers needs business at all points of time has to aim at profit maximization but through the satisfaction of the customer needs and wants now coming to the different characteristics of a business activity the first one it should be an economic activity business necessarily has to be an economic activity now what is an economic activity any activity which gives you a monetary return is called as an economic activity now if your mother is cooking food for you at home she is cooking it out of love and affection right that my child is hungry i need to cook food for him whatever you want she cooks for you but she is doing it out of love and affection for you right but then at the same time if she starts off a dabba dabba service wherein she is supplying tiffin to different offices at their lunch hours and she is charging some money for it let's say she is giving a tiffin for 150 bucks is she doing it out of love and affection no she is doing it because she is aiming at earning profit कॉस्ट पड़ी उनको सब खाना बनाने की सेवेंटी रुपीज एट्टी रुपीज उसके ऊपर अपना प्रॉफिट मार्जिन लगाया ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट लगाया डेढ़ सौ में जाके उसको बेचा राइट सो हियर ऑल दो दिविटी इज द सेम शी इज कुकिंग बट शी इज कुकिंग विद अ डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्टिव इन माइंड राइट तो द सेम एक्टिविटी कैन बी इकोनॉमिक एंड कैन बी नॉन इकोनॉमिक एट द सेम टाइम डिफरेंस कहां से आता है विद वॉट ऑब्जेक्टिव आर यू परफॉर्मिंग दैट एक्टिविटी क्लियर आई एम अ टीचर राइट आई एम टीचिंग माई ओन डॉटर फाइन आई एम टीचिंग हर अकाउंटेंसी आई एम टीचिंग हर बिजनेस स्टडीज ऑन डेली बेसिस बट एम आई टीचिंग हर फॉर एम आई लुकिंग फॉर सम काइंड ऑफ रिटर्न येस मे बी येस आई एम लुकिंग आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू हर परफॉर्मिंग वेरी वेल बट इफ आई ओपन अ ट्यूशन सेंटर ऑफ माइंड right and there i'm delivering lectures i'm doing the same job but i'm charging money for that so wherever this monetary factor comes into picture that activity becomes an economic activity so for any activity to be termed as a business activity it necessarily has to be an economic activity thereafter coming to the next part that is production now whatever product you are going to sell whatever product am i going to sell i have to manufacture that product either i manufacture it myself or i am going to import it from somewhere and then further sell it right maybe if let's say if i talk about manufacturing computers fine i have my own assembly line over here i manufacture myself that is one part another is 
that I get the monitor from somewhere else, I get the CPU from somewhere else and I get other devices A, B, C from different sources and I assemble it at one place and then further resell it, right? So definitely second thing, what necessarily has to be there is production or procurement of goods with a purpose to sell it further. That is very important. That is with a purpose to sell it further. You are procuring your goods or you are manufacturing your goods but the purpose, the main objective of doing both of these is to further sell it to the customer again for a price. Third part, what comes in here is sale and exchange of goods and services for money. You have produced or you have manufactured the product or else you've procured it from somewhere else. Now, the next step is that I have to launch it in the market. I have to offer it for sale. I have to offer it for sale and my offer has to be accepted by the customer. My offer has to be accepted. The, if there is an offer, there has to be an acceptance. Otherwise, the offer's got no meaning, right? So there has to be sale and exchange of goods and services for money. I am not going to give it for free. If I'm giving it for free, if I'm doing it on charity basis, then that is not business. Then that is not business. You have to, if you are selling it for value for some money you're looking at some monetary return all right then it is going to constitute a business activity coming to the next part regularity in dealings very important i have an old car okay and i have this car let's say gaadi mere paas 5 6 saal se hai fine main apni gaadi bechi market mein theek hai aur mere ko paise mil gaye uske now it is very much an economic activity क्यों मुझे पैसे मिल रहे हैं अपनी गाड़ी बेचने के लिए बट दिस इज नॉट अ बिजनेस एक्टिविटी वाई एम आई डूइंग इट ऑन डेली बेसिस एम आई इन टू द बिजनेस ऑफ सेल एंड परचेज ऑफ कार्स नो अनदर एग्जाम्पल मैंने अगर अपनी गाड़ी बेची मैंने भी उतने ही पैसे के लिए बेची राइट एंड देर इज अनदर डीलर राइट हु डील्स इन सेल एंड परचेज ऑफ सेकेंड हैंड कार्स फॉर हिम इट विल कॉन्स्टिट्यूट अ बिजनेस एक्टिविटी बट फॉर मी इट इज नॉट अ बिजनेस एक्टिविटी Why? Because I am doing it as a one-time act. I am I am doing it as a one-time act, whereas he is doing it on a regular basis. So it is very important that if only a transaction is being done on regular basis, it becomes a business transaction. If it's a one-time transaction, it is not to be considered as a business transaction. Next part: profit earning. Again, we say that the business comes into being with the main objective of maximization of profit, right? Like I gave you this example of starting off with a tiffin service. I said the cost of making one tiffin comes out to be 50 rupees, right? I, if I am going to sell this to the customer at 50 only, so where am I gaining? Where am I gaining? Why am I doing all this? I am doing this, I am getting into this business of cooking food and delivering tiffins to different offices because I look at earning profit out of this activity. I look at making profit from selling tiffins to the office people, right? So if an activity is, if and only if an activity is undertaken with the main objective of earning profit, it is to be termed as a business activity if profit maximization is not if it is not the main objective you are doing it for charity then it is not a business activity at all next there is always an element of risk hum jabhi bhi business karte hain hume kabhi sure shot nahi hota ki iske liye demand hogi you anticipate you anticipate that this product that i am launching in the market maybe i am able to create a demand for that Maybe I'm able to create a demand for that. So there is a lot of a risk that the entrepreneur always has to undertake. And be rest assured, one always gets the return for the risk. We say that higher the risk, higher is the return. So you have to be a risk taker to be an entrepreneur. You got to take risks. Only then will you get the reward. Thereafter, coming to the business has to be legal and lawful. Let us say that if I enter into this, uh, I am selling uh, these drugs, okay? 
I'm into the business. I say that I am selling drugs to X, Y, Z for a certain price. This is an economic activity. I'm taking money. Okay? उससे मेरे को प्रॉफिट भी हो रहा है मैं रेगुलर बेसिस पे भी कर रही हूँ ये सारे कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स फुलफिल हो रहे हैं इट्स एन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी आई एम प्रोक्योरिंग दीज ड्रग्स फ्रॉम एल्स वेयर टू फर्दर सेल इट राइट देन देर इज सेल एंड एक्सचेंज आई एम सेलिंग इट टू समन फॉर सम अमाउंट ऑफ मनी देन रेगुलरिटी इन डीलिंग्स आई एम डूइंग इट ऑन रेगुलर बेसिस राइट देन आई एम अर्निंग प्रॉफिट आउट ऑफ दिस एक्टिविटी देन देर इज एलिमेंट ऑफ रिस्क की कोई खरीदे या ना खरीदे हो सकता है कोई ड्रग एडिक बने कोई ना बने बट Is this act legal? Is this act lawful? A big no. So therefore, this is not a business activity. You can't say that I am into the business of selling drugs. No, it's an illegal activity. So last but not the least, this is also one of the most important factors that whatever business that you are entering into, it has to be correct in the eyes of law. right now taking uh, the topic a little further i'll say that business activities can be divided into three parts industry trade and commerce business activities can be divided into three parts that is industry trade and commerce now industry is mainly concerned with procurement of raw material extraction of raw material and converting this raw material into a finished product which finally reaches the customer which finally reaches the customer further industry may be we can divide it into three parts that is we have primary industry we have secondary industry and we have tertiary industry now primary industry again humne isko bhi divide kar diya pure mein primary industry is basically concerned with extraction of raw material from natural resources extraction of raw material from the natural resources right i mean aap sugar cane ko process karte hain right then that whatever uh, the residue that you're going to get that is going to be generated out of the primary industry primary industry basically gives you the raw material which further will be utilized by the secondary industry right raw material which has been extracted from the primary industry from the natural resources by primary industry right will be further passed on to the secondary industry which is going to use this raw material and convert it into finished products that are finally going to be used by the customers right now after these two comes into picture the third type of industry that is your tertiary sector that is your tertiary industries tertiary industries they provide the support services to the primary and the secondary industry they provide the support services to the primary and the secondary industry so that the final product can be made available to the customer at the right place and at the right time coming to the second part trade trade is basically concerned with exchange of goods and services for value exchange of goods and services for money now after the product is ready after the product is ready the role of industry gets over now comes into the picture trade trade means exchange of goods and services for value aap market mein jaake bechte hain right you are selling your product for a particular price that is trade fine but trade cannot operate in isolation it is a it, it has to there comes into picture commerce commerce will include trade as well as auxiliaries to trade trade ka matlab hai exchange of goods and services for value but we need certain support services to facilitate trade we need these auxiliaries to trade to facilitate trade now we all know ek product humne launch kiya 
right the prospective customers for the same product are spread over a wide geographical area they are spread over a wide geographical area how are you going to reach all of these customers how am i going to reach all these customers of mine who are spread over a wide geographical area here the first and foremost auxiliary comes into picture that is transportation that is transportation we say that transportation removes the hindrance of place transportation makes it possible for an entrepreneur to make sure that his product reaches all the prospective customers which are spread over a wide geographical area right if it was not for transportation if it was not for transportation my horizon would have been limited to a very very small area but today because of the transportation facilities which are available to us you talk about you talk about your airways you talk about roadways you could talk about railways right we are able to reach the remotest of the area with the help of transportation so this removes my hindrance of place that is no longer a hindrance that where exactly the customer is placed fine second thing that comes into picture is advertising now after you have manufactured your product how do you inform your prospective customers about your project product you can't go personally to each and every customer that hello this is the product that i have manufactured are you interested to buy it no that's not the way it works we have to inform our prospective customers again who are spread over a wide geographical area right so we use the means we do it by the means of advertising it could be by advertising in print media it could be by advertising in television right or it could be by advertising in radio by advertising about your product on these medias right we overcome the hindrance of information we overcome the hindrance of information with the help of advertising we are able to inform a huge number of customers in one go we cover a huge number of customers in a single go then comes into the picture warehousing now what exactly is warehousing see there is always a time gap between production and consumption it is it doesn't go simultaneously as far as the goods are concerned for services yes it is takes place simultaneously but when we talk about goods right the production and consumption does not take place simultaneously simultaneously you place an order it does take some time for your order to be processed and your product to be ready तो क्या इसका मतलब ये है कि हमने अगर ऑर्डर प्लेस किया उसके बाद हम वेट करें कि हमारा ऑर्डर रेडी होगा तब हमारे पास आएगा मे बी बाय दैट टाइम माय नीड इज नो लॉन्गर देयर माय नीड फॉर दैट प्रोडक्ट इज नो लॉन्गर देयर द आइडिया इज दैट आई शुड बी गेटिंग माय प्रोडक्ट एट द राइट टाइम व्हेन आई नीड इट उस समय नहीं मिला अगर तो द प्रोडक्ट द यूटिलिटी ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो फॉर मी राइट नाउ दिस बैरियर इज ओवरकम विद द हेल्प ऑफ warehousing we produce and then we store it in the warehouse we store it in the warehouse as and when there is a demand for that particular product we release it from the warehouse and it is there in the market for consumption it is there in the market for consumption so warehousing creates time utility it creates time utility it helps us overcome the hindrance of time it helps us overcome the hindrance of time right thereafter we talk about banking now when i'm starting my own business it is not necessary that whatever amount of funds are required to be invested in the business i have the requisite amount of money at my end not possible not possible for everyone so what do i do where do i get the funds from where do i arrange for finance now banks have solved this problem of mine right it has now become so easy to apply for loans right and then you can keep on paying repaying the loan in easy installments 
so i don't really have to worry if i do not have the requisite amount of money to be invested in the business in one go no one has right some amount of owner's capital and some amount of borrowed capital some amount of borrowed capital will make my job easy right thereafter now next is we talk about insurance now while i my goods excess production whatever the excess production is that is stored in the warehouse i told you right now what if there is a fire in the warehouse and the entire lot of my product is destroyed i don't have anything in my hand then what if there is a theft what if the goods get pilfered right now in order to protect myself against these kind of risks risks due to loss by theft or loss due to fire or pilferage i can get my goods insured i can get my goods insured by paying a small amount of premium by paying a small amount of premium i can get my goods insured and i can minimize i cannot i cannot totally i can't say that totally i will eliminate the risk i can only minimize i can minimize the amount of risk that my goods might be subjected to so these are the auxiliaries to trade matlab a trade ka maine aapko bataya tha that this means exchange of goods and services for money but this exchange of goods and services for money is just not possible until and unless i have these auxiliaries to trade right i repeat transportation it covers or it removes the hindrance of place advertising removes the hindrance of information warehousing removes the hindrance of time by making the goods available to the customers at the right place and at the right time right banking removes the hindrance of finance by making it so easy for the entrepreneurs to get loans from the banks right and last but not the least insurance which removes the hindrance of risk by minimizing the amount of risk that the that the entrepreneur is subjected to thank you and have a nice day